Let, let me tell you about that spot. That company had a hard time understanding my thought process and who I was. And when I told them, my biggest fans are the youth because sometimes people my age and, and people that look like me didn't really understand me. So I need to appeal to the youth because the youth was the one going out there telling mommy, daddy, I want those shoes. Wow. I need you to buy those shoes. So my marketing hat was always on, even at an early age and an early stage of my life. And I was always comfortable around kids. So it's not far-fetched to understand why I'm coaching right now, because I have an affinity for kids and trying to progress them to be professionals, not just professional football players, but professionals, period. I wish the day that the draft was held, the next day we had a, a corporation and a Fortune 500 draft. Because see, I want my kids to be out there. Not just my biological kids, but my kids that play for me at Jackson State. We got 97% of these kids that are not going pro. What's gonna to happen to them? I need them to make a difference in life. I need them to be somebody. I need them to go in and enhance their communities. I need them to make a change somewhere in life and to be great fathers and to be great parents and to be great kids. That's the mindset that I have for my youngsters. If there's, yeah, give it up, exactly. If there are athletes right now, if they're athletes right now, whatever sport, and you like their example on the field and also off the field, and these are your kids, who would you tell them to watch? Jesus. That's player. Uh, uh, it's a great recruiter right here. Yeah, but see, oftentimes you got to understand those things that you see, those things that you clap for, those things that you cheer for, those things that you idolize. They're not role models, they're models playing a role. You don't, you don't know who they are, you just saw them doing what they're gifted and blessed to do for two hours of the day. Could you imagine if the world got an opportunity to see you at your best for two hours a day, how your, your profile would just be enhanced, everything would be wonderful, everything would be so different, because we're showing you for two hours doing what you're gifted to do. But what happens to the other 22? See, that's where the problem occurs. That's where the trappings of life yeah. occurs. And so oftentimes we do fall into those trappings. I would advise you to be that role model for your child, for your friend, for your homies, for that person that looks up to you and looks out for you. You need to be that person. The role model should be somebody you can touch. My mama was my role model, man. My, my mama was that. My mama was all that in a bag of chips and would cuss you out to this day and not stumble over a word. My mama worked and made sure and saw one another, although they, they never met. My mother, even when I made it, she never asked for meat coats and, and gold chains and diamonds, although I got that for her. She's on her third home now, never asked for one because she was old school. She just wanted what was best for me. And she wasn't thirsty, she wasn't hungry, she wasn't seeking and searching for attention and adulations. And now we got parents trying to be the boss. We got parents trying to be in every commercial, trying to be in every shot. Although I did put my mama in a Super Bowl commercial, which you're gonna see on Sunday. Yeah, awesome. I had to make her do that, I had to make her do that. But it's a different game out there, so we got to be careful who we're calling role models. But I truly believe the role model you should be able to touch. You know, when did that change for you? Because, you know, we all seen you with the chains, the, the jewelry. That was when image. That was image. Okay. Something you could imagine. That was not me. See, I'm a marketer. I market. And I'm pretty darn good at it. You should clap for me right there. Because <laughs> I'm about to tell you a few things that you're not going to believe. I created that persona. I created that character. I'm from Fort Myers, Florida. Anybody here from Fort Myers? Okay, let me tell you something, baby. When we grew up, the drug dealers were the guys. The rappers were the guys. What did they have? The gold chains, the flamboyant look, the flash, the whips. I gave the kids that, allowing them to know you didn't have to do that. So it was all persona 
and perception and, and, and you had to believe what you want to believe. Now, let me tell you the truth of the matter. I stopped using profanity in 1986. No, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not done with telling you about praying. I'm in the third person now. I've never been high a day of my life. Hold on, I'm not done. I've never smoked or drink, sip a taste of alcohol, wine, or anything in my entire life. So, all the stupid and the foolish and the idiotic things out there that I did, I just did that, all right? I was not under the influence, but that was really me, all right? But that was all uh, it is just to bring attractability, just to bring something to a position um, that people had never seen before. That's all that was. If you like that clip, watch this next short clip right here. And to watch the full episode, click right here. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.